Alfa no para. Tot ha en lo. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Oh, and we're still crying. Oh. oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. We declare it in the house of your Nobody oh. can heal us like you can, deliver us like you can. Nobody, nowhere. Nobody, nowhere. Nobody, nowhere. Nobody, nowhere. Nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're my great deliverer. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. the Lord. We'll stop it there. God bless you, my brethren. God bless you. Welcome to this teleconference as we go forth, giving God the praise, giving God the glory, the glory and honor that is due unto his name. Our God is a great God and he's a great king over all the earth. And we are blessed to have a God who is a God of peace, a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of understanding, and everything is all in him. The fullness of the Godhead, the Bible says, the songwriter says, it's all, in him. it's all in Jesus. Whatever we need in this life and in the life to come, it's all in Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. No, you search all over. Search the entire universe. Search the entire earth. Search all you want. There is no one like Jesus. So we lift up the name of Jesus today and we give God praise and we give him the glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Before I go into the word, just a short prayer, uh, giving God thanks. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We worship you. Thank you for everyone that has joined this teleconference tonight. I pray your blessing will be upon us. And as we go forth in your word, Lord, pray you will give us open understanding to your word. Open our hearts that we may be susceptible to your word, that we may absorb your word in our hearts. David said, I hid thy word in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Lord, help us to hide your word in our heart that we may not sin against thee. We give you thanks, we give you praise. Pray, pray you bless us, direct us, lead us. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. We're going to go straight into the word today and we thank God for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't it good to be alive? Even though this world is upside down and we can say this world is upside down. Because every day we pick up the, the news, everything we see in the news, there's nothing positive, everything is negative. But one thing is good, God is in control. And that's the comfort that we have. God is in control. Praise the name of the Lord. So we give God praise and we give God glory tonight. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to go into the Word and today I want to challenge us in this way. The King of Glory. Who is the King of Glory? Who do we know is the King of Glory? And I just want to read a psalm taken from Psalm 24. Psalm 24. And we're going to analyze this today to see who really is the King of Glory. 
This is a Psalm of David. I just love the Psalms of the Psalm of David. They're always so inspiring. They're also anointing. The, the Psalm that David wrote was wrote after, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Spirit was upon him. God's Spirit was upon David when he wrote this Psalm. And this is Psalm 24. And I'm just going to read the whole verses, uh, uh, about 10 verses. I'm going to read it and then we move on. Psalm 24, it says, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be he lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Praise the Lord. Question today. Who is the King of Glory? That's a question. It says the Lord of Hosts. The one Lord. The one Savior, the one Redeemer, the one who created us, the one who made us, the one who died for us, the one who came to earth and walked among men and taught men how to live and how to serve him, the Lord of hosts. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, ye everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. David said, "The Lord, the earth." In verse one, he says, "The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof." The earth that we live in, and the fullness of this earth that we live in, everything that we see here. Even the things we can't see, everything, the earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything in it belongs to the Lord. Praise the Lord. The world and they that dwell therein. So we see the picture now. Everything that we see, everything that we perceive, everything that we imagine belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everyone that dwelleth on the earth, whether they may be principalities, power, whatever it may be, kings and priests and kingdoms, dominion, everything, it belongs to the Lord. It's His. He made it. He created it. He created man. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We all belong to the Lord. We are his sheep of his pasture. He created us. We are his possession. Because it says he has founded it. God has founded this world upon the seas. Because in the beginning, the Bible says the world was in darkness and void, empty, nothing. It was seas all over, just water, 
cover the earth. And the power of God and the power of His word. You see, when we when we know God and when we serve God, we 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 are we are so blessed. We are so blessed because we know the one who has all the power in his hands. The power is in his mouth, is in speak, is in his word. All God needs to do is speak the word. It is done. And when we know we have such a great God and a loving God and a peaceful God, we should we should be rejoicing. It doesn't matter what come upon us, we should be rejoicing. He founded this earth upon the seas. When there was no land, there was just water cover the earth. And God, through his, through his power of his word, he called the dry land out because he was prepared to make man his own image and we are not made, we are not made to live in, in, in water. So he called the, uh, the land out of the sea by his word. And he spoke the word and all the things, all everything that we see, the trees, everything that we see, the mountain, the valleys, uh, and everything that we perceive and we see, the rivers, the ponds, and all those things, and the fishes of the sea, and the fowls of the air, and everything that creep at all, the wild beasts of the field, was created by God, the Lord. The great I am. For he founded this earth upon the sea and established it upon the flood. But when God made this earth, he made it for man. He made it for us, for man. Because we were created in his own image. And in his image, we were created. So you want to know what God look like? Look in the mirror. Because we are in the image of God. As the Bible says. So how strange it is that when Jesus came down to earth. In the form of the... In, in, in the um, came in the womb of Mary the Virgin. And we see him walk among men. And why we do not understand the mystery of God, that God was incarnated in the Virgin and came out a man-child, came to save the world, came to shed his blood. What a wonderful God we serve. What a great God we serve. What a wonderful God. So David went on to say in verse 3, Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Who? Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? The most holy place. Who? There is a type of people. There is a special people who can ascend into the hills of the Lord. Into the presence of the Lord stand in his holy place who is a question and if we ch check this psalm psalm 24 it is full of questions but it also gives us the answer it asks a question and it gives us the answer who shall dwell in the hills of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place but as I said David spoke unto the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost was upon him when he wrote the psalm. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart. That's the condition. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sown deceitfully. He that not worship vanity who do not believe in vanity but believe in the soul salvation believe in the value of the soul of man because everything that is vanity will vanish away and he that has not sown deceitfully he has not lied don't don't, don't lie deceitfully N knowing something 
is so and deceitfully deceive, deceive, deceive others. We are not among those who lift up our soul unto vanity. No, we are not of those who have sown deceitfully, sown to a lie. If we have a clean hands, I think, you know, when we examine ourselves, we should know if our hands are clean, if we have deceived anyone, if we have defrauded anyone, and we should know what is in our heart. If we have peace in our heart with our fellow man, we should check ourselves. He that has a clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, he shall ascend, go up, into the hills of the Lord and shall stand in the holy place. I just think that's beautiful to stand in the presence of Almighty God, to stand in the holy hills. Oh my, we have a song that we sing, we'll be shouting on the hills of glory. We'll be shouting on the hills, shouting on the land, hills. In the land of which we'll tell the story, we'll be shouting on the hills of God. If we have clean hands and a pure heart, and has not lifted our soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitfully, David went on to say, He shall receive the blessing from God, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation, this is the generation that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. That the type of Jacob fought with the angel. And he fought with the angel. And you know, we have a fight. Our life is a fight. And we, our duty is to fight and say as Jacob, I will not let you go. Say to the Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go. This is the generation of them that seek thy face, that seek the face of the Lord, the blessings. The Lord shall receive the, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord. That's a condition for serving the Lord with a clean hands and a pure heart. It went on to say, lift up your heads, O ye gates, the eternal gates, the eternal gates of heaven. They said there's 12 gates to the city, three to the north, three to the south, three to the east and three to the west. Lift up your head, O ye gates. It's not one gate, there are 12 gates to the city of glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, be he lifted up, lift up ye everlasting doors. Hallelujah. And the King of glory, hallelujah, shall come in. The King of glory, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend, Lift up your heads, and the King of glory shall come in. So I went on to say, who is this King of glory? This is the question, who is the King of glory? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who made heaven and earth, the Lord who created man in his own image. The Lord who formed the sea and the dry land. The Lord that created everything that creepeth upon the earth and those that fly in the heavens above the earth. The Lord, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord who has never lost a battle. He cannot lose. When we love, when we back Jesus, we back a winner, one who cannot lose. There's no gambling when you back Jesus. It's not gamble. It's a fact that with Jesus, you can't lose. 
Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. We see so many times that Israel went out to fight against the enemies, his enemies, and we see that God gave the command. And sometimes the victory was spontaneous. It was just, it just happened because God say it shall happen. Sometimes they didn't need to fight. God just spoke the word and the enemy flee in every different direction. That is the God we serve. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads away gates and lift them up. He everlasting doors. Can you imagine the doors? The everlasting doors on all sides lifted up because the King of glory is coming and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord of hosts there is only one lord there always has been just one lord in isaiah 43 and from verse 3 to verse 13, I'm going to read Isaiah 43, verse 3. I am the Lord. This is Isaiah prophesying. I am the Lord. I am the Lord thy God. Isaiah 43, verse 3. The Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. There's only one Lord. The Holy One of Israel, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba, Seba for thee. God is saying to us, since thou was precious in my sight, can you imagine we are precious in the sight of God? Can you imagine? Since thou wast precious in my sight, and thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, therefore I give men for thee, and people for thy life. I always say God loves us so much that God would give us a, a nation God will give a nation for all the love that he has for us. He says, I will give people for thee. I will give men for thee. I will give anything for thee. Fear not, I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. God has his eyes upon us and no matter what happened, it doesn't matter what come upon us, God eyes is upon us. He said, from the east to the west, I will gather my children. I will gather them that love me, that fear me. I will not forsake, I will not leave them. Because he said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. God will never forsake us. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. God has made us and formed us for his glory. We are here to glorify God. We are here to give God the praise and the glory. We are here for no other reason but to lift up this wonderful God, this, this man who we claim to know, who came down to earth and lived among us and showed, opened himself as a book to us to show us the type of God he is, to show us love, to love one another, to have peace in our soul to have mercy, to see mercy and grace come upon us. Him, for I have created him for my glory. He has created us for his glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. 
bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf people that have ears. Let all the nation be gathered together. Let all the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show former things? Let them bring their weaknesses that they may be justified. And let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my weaknesses, saith the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that he may know and believe me and understand that I am he. I am he. Jesus said, I am he. The prophecy from Isaiah, the Lord is the clear, I am he. There is not a two God nor three God. There is not a two God or three Lord. It's only one God. And at the end of the day, it will be just the bride and the bridegroom. The bride is represented by Lord Jesus, the King of glory. He is the bridegroom. The church is the bride of Christ. That's all that will remain, the bride and the bridegroom. And my servant who have chosen that he may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Before God, before the Lord Jesus. At the time, he was known as Jehovah. And God has changed his name through generation. He was the Lord of hosts. He was El Shaddai. He was um, Jehovah Jairi. He was Jehovah Nissi. He was Jehovah Tinkesh. And he had so many names, but it's one God and it's one Lord. And his name is Jesus. In Isaiah he says, Before me I am he, and before me there was no God formed. There was no God. There is just one God and our Savior. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. There will never be more than one God. There never was and never will be. But when we realize and you know the personality of Jesus and the type of person God is, we see God in Jesus. Because the Bible says, in him, in Jesus, dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We see God in Jesus. And we see Jesus in God. And that's why I said, I and my Father are one. There's no difference. It's not two. It's one. Jesus says clearly, I and my Father are one. Not two. One. So who is the King of glory? Who is the King of glory? The Lord Jesus. He's the King of glory. Before me there was no God and form, neither shall there be one after me. I, even I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Everything that we have, everything that we own, was given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. If we achieve anything in this world, academically achieve anything, it is through the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have nothing to boast about. We give glory to God. If we have health and strength, we give glory to God. If we have whatever we need in life, we give glory to God. We give thanks to God. It says even I even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared it, and have saved, and have showed, 
and there was when there was no stranger among you, therefore ye are my witnesses that I am God. We are witnesses in that Jesus is Lord and God. Yea, therefore, before the day was, yea, in verse 13, Isaiah 43, verse 13, it says, yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall, he, who shall let it? The Lord says, before the day was, before there was a day, I am he, and there's none that can deliver out of my hands. Praise God. What a wonderful God we serve. And in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah chapter 53, I'll read a few verses down from verse 1. As I say, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has believed our report? When we say that Jesus, that God, came from heaven, embodied himself in the form of a man, and walked for 33 years and taught for three years, three and a half years, his ministry. Who would believe that God was so great and wonderful? Who would believe that he would make such a sacrifice for us? Who? So as I said, who has believed the report? Even when Jesus was on earth, Jesus did everything right. He didn't, everything that Jesus did was right. It was good. He was faultless. He was sinless. He was a perfect man. Jesus Christ was the only perfect man who has ever walked on this earth. And yet, look what they did. They crucified him. They hung him on a the, the tree. They mocked him. They scourged him. They whipped him. They spat in his face. The king of glory. This is, a, this is the one. That's what they did to the king of glory. And the psalmist said, Lift up your head, O ye gates, so that the king of glory shall come in. Look what they did. Who hath believed a report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall go up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Oh, glory be to God. It is just awesome. It is just awesome reading this scripture. The King of Glory came down to earth, dwelt among us, grew up as a tender plant, a root out of a dry ground. He had no form, comeliness. He was not attractive. There was no beauty in him that we should desire him. And he went on to say, he was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Can you imagine? The king of glory coming down, dwell among us, and become rejected of men. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. So much so that we hid our face from him. He was despised. And we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our grief. He has borne our, he borne our grief. He has carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But this, as I went on to say, he was wounded for our transgression, not for his own. He was wounded for our transgression. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. And with his stripes are we healed. So the stripes that he had was to heal us. Was for healing. He was wounded for our transgression. Not, uh, not because of his, he was without sin. But he carried our sins. He carried our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes were we healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was bought as a lamb before the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearer is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare this generation? Who shall tell this generation about what Jesus did? Who is going to declare the great mercies and the love of God? Who shall declare it to this generation? When they don't want to hear about God, they don't want to hear about salvation, they don't want to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. Each has turned to their own ways. He was taken from prison from judgment and who shall declare this generation for he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken and he made his grave in hell. He made his grave with the wicked. Sorry, he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich his death because he had done no violence neither there was any deceit in his mouth. Jesus was a not a violent man. He was not a deceitful man. He was a plain, honest man, sinless. And that's the only reason, that's how he could offer his sinless blood to redeem the world. How great, how wonderful, how mighty is our God. How wonderful is our God. He is the King of glory. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. In John chapter 18, verse 4, I read, Jesus therefore, knowing all things should come upon him, went forth. This is the time when they were about to arrest Jesus. When Judas betrayed him, and they came, the priests and the multitude came, they, they, they came to arrest him, take him to the judgment hall. But Jesus, it says, Jesus knowing therefore all things that should come upon him. Jesus knew everything that was going to happen to him. Nobody knows the future but Jesus because he's God. Because he's God, he knows the future. Jesus, knowing therefore all things that should come upon him, went forth and said, so when they came to arrest him, the Bible says he went forth and said unto them, Who seek he? And they answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says unto them, I am he. Big word, wonderful word, a true word. I am he. I am he. I am the great I am. I am who I am. And Judas also which betrayed him stood with him. As soon as he said unto them, I am he, they went backwards. And fell to the ground. 
And Jesus said on said, and Jesus asked them again, Whom seek he? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If thou therefore seek me, let this let these go their way that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of them which was which he spake of them that thou givest me have I lost none so Jesus says I am he let my disciples go let my followers go leave them I am he whom you seek if you seek me Take me, leave them, let them go. It was a prophecy. But he says, I am he. I am he. It's a big word. I am the great I am. I am the lily of the valley. I am the first and I am the last. I am that I am. In when he met when he met Moses, when Moses saw the burning bush and the mount, Moses says, Who shall I tell these people who sent me? When he sent him when God sent him sent him down to Egypt to deliver his people. Moses said to God, Whom shall I say the God is that has sent me? And God said, I am that I am. I am the great I am. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, verse 12, it reads, and I turned to see, this is John on the Isle of Patmos, because all the disciples were martyred except John. And John is the only disciple who died a natural death. And God kept him alive because God wanted to reveal to him the things that would happen in the last days. And God showed him these things that we are witnessing now and that we're about to see. And God gave John a letter to seven churches. All the churches were in Asia. And after God spoke to John regarding the seven churches, John says here in Revelation chapter 1 verse 12 And I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like the Son of Man. Hallelujah. John actually had a vision of Jesus on the Isle of Patmos. He said, I will turn. He heard the voice give him all this instruction concerning the churches. And he said, I turned to see the voice. I turned to the direction of where the voice was speaking to me. And it was the Lord, the King of glory. Hallelujah. And he turned and saw seven candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, Jesus, clothed in a white garment down to his foot. He was clothed down to his feet in a white garment, girded his paps with a golden girdle. Hallelujah. I can just imagine what John saw when he turned to see the voice. And it says his head was like heels. His head, the head on his heels was like wool. He had woolen hair. 
and white as snow. He had woolen hair. So when we see picture of the white Jesus and long hair, that's not what John saw. He saw Jesus with his hair white as wool. Even maybe like mine. <laughs> Woolly hair. And his and his eyes was like a flame of fire. And his feet was like fine brass as they had been burnt. This is what John saw. And his voice as the sound of many waters. When John saw Jesus and the Isle of Patmos, he saw a man clothed in garment down to his feet. His head of his hair was like wool, white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes was like the flame of fire. And his feet was like brass. What color is brass? What color is brass? And it's as brass that is burnt in the furnace. That's what John saw when he looked to hear the voice of the Lord, the King of glory. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift him up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. His voice was like many waters. Oh, glory be to God. The voice of Jesus, the King of glory, was like the sound of men. Have you ever said, have you ever heard the sea, the, the sound of the sea when the sea is boisterous and rough? Have you heard the power of the waves? Ooh. And that's the sound of the voice. That spoke unto him because he was the king of glory. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword. Out of the mouth of our Lord Jesus went a sharp two edged sword. Two edges, two edges cut both sides. And his countenance was like the sun shineth in his strength. Oh, glory be to God. Won't it be a time when we go over yonder? Won't it be a time? Won't it be a time? And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his hand on me and say unto me, Fear not. Fear not. I love those comforting words. When you're petrified and someone says to you, fear not. There's some comfort in those words. Fear not. The Lord, the King of Glory said to John on the Isle of Patmos, fear not. I am the first and I am the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. John saw God upon the Isle of Patmos. God, John saw him. And God and John described how he saw God upon the Isle of Patmos. Clearly saying. Describe him clearly what he saw. And because of the vision, he says, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his hand upon me and said, Fear not, I am the first, I am the last. He that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen. He went on to say unto John, I have the keys of hell and of death. I have the keys. Who has got the keys? Hallelujah. Of hell and death. Who has got the keys? Jesus says, I have the keys of hell and death. Write these things. Write down what you have seen. Write it down. 
I want the world to see. Know what you have seen. Write these down. Write them down. What thou hast seen. And the things which are. And the things which shall be hereafter. And he explained the mystery of the seven stars that thou sawest in my right hand is the seven golden candlestick. And the seven stars are the angel of the seven churches and the seven candlestick which thou sawest are the churches. Our Lord Jesus leave no stone unturned. He's a great wonderful God. He's a mighty God. He's a loving God. He's a great, great, wonderful God. So we start with ask a question. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord Jesus Christ. He is the King of Glory. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of Glory. Lastly, just one verse from St. John chapter 4 and verse 25. This woman of Samaria came to the well and when Jesus revealed himself unto her, the woman said in St. John chapter 4 verse 25, the woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah, which is called Christ, when he comes, he shall tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee am he. I am he. So who is the king of glory? Jesus says, I am he. Above him there is no other. On the Jericho Road is just me and Jesus. On the Jericho Road is just you and Jesus. Hallelujah. Get on the glory road, my brothers, sisters. Heaven is now in view. The road may be rough at time, but Jesus will carry you through. Holding you by the hand, leading you through the land. Get on. Get on the glory road. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We'll stop there. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us. We give God thanks for you. and We give God praise for everyone. I'm just going to close with a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We lift up your holy name. Your name is alone is excellent. Bless us as we go forth in this week. I pray you'll be with us. Be a guide. Cover us under your precious blood. Sanctify us, Lord. Keep us safe from all danger, seen and unseen. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the name of Jesus. Bless you, my brethren. God bless you. Thank you for joining our teleconference tonight. God bless every one of you. May the Lord, grace of the Lord be with you and bless you. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brother Delian. God bless you.